before we get into that, let's look a little bit at what is the, what is the Bible or is, what can we learn from the Bible about conflict? Where does conflict appear in the Bible? And we are going to actually go back, back to the beginning, <laughs> Genesis 1, Proverbs, and John. Um, because it's actually when we, it, the Bible is, is our story, okay? We are part of the Bible story. It just continues working through us in our lives, collectively, individually. So what we want to say, okay, where does, how does this fit into the Bible? Does the Bible have anything to say about conflict? Actually, the Bible has lots to say about conflict. We would, we would understand that. But in terms of the foundation, um, I'll share, before I start, I'll share a story. When I first arrived in Mindanao in 2008, 2009, uh, I wanted to understand how do, how do people in Mindanao deal with conflict? One of the things I picked up in my wandering and journeying through life was that I don't have all the answers and it's best to find out um, from people when you enter a new situation or a new community is to listen first and find out what expertise is here? What are the strengths that already exist in this community? And if I'm going to be part of this, especially if it involves conflict, then I really need to be in partnership with people in the community. Okay? Even though I have a master's degree in conflict transformation and all these things. So I work with a, a local ministry that had an outreach, uh, some work with some of the tribal or indigenous communities in Mindanao. And so the leader said, why don't you go up to this one tribal chief in Bukidnon province, which is in the central part, and he is known as, actually, as a conflict resolution expert, okay, within their tribe. So he is known as one of the experts. So he said, why don't you go and you can make it like a study. You can say, what, what is the expertise of the Talaandig tribe? Okay, that's the name, the Talaandig in Bukidnon. So I said, that's great, because I also am a little bit of an anthropologist, so I appreciate sort of the, the cultural learning. So I went and I just listened, and we, uh, I asked him to share with me. And when I got up there, the first thing he said to me, and he asked me, he said, do you know how to solve conflicts between animals? Or do you know how to con solve conflicts between plants? And I thought, let's see, in my, in my masteral program, I had a conflict transformation and mediation and restorative, but there was nothing about animals and plants in those classes. <laughs> so, but I think the point was we have, a, we have a more holistic perspective and so we need to learn. And one of the things I, after spending many hours listening, was that their whole approach to dealing with conflict actually came out of their creation story how they understood themselves to be created, they have their own creation story. And out of the, as part of that story, there is conflict and there is peacemaking. And at some point, their ancestors were appointed to be the peacemakers for their community, and not only for their tribal community, but symbolically for all the tribes in Mindanao. So that was really amazing. They had like this sacred mandate from the creator, what they call magbabaya, that's their word for God, to be the peacemakers for the tribes in Mindanao. And if you actually, and I spent a lot of time working with Lumad or indigenous communities, you'll find that leadership in these communities, being a mediator or a peacemaker is one of the core elements of leadership in the community. If you can't do that, you can't really be a leader you will not be able to actually lead the community. So let's go back to our creation story, okay, which is in Genesis. And I'd like us to split up into three groups. And one group, I'm just going to group you so it goes quickly over here. We have how many people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 13, 14, 15. So about five in a group, okay? Is that okay? And I'm just going to ask you to, so this group, first five here, after your group, introduce yourself in your group, and, and Eloy also. You can introduce yourselves to us. Um, but for the time being, from Sir J to Ray Vic, you will take these first five verses of Genesis. 
And you're just going to discuss, it actually won't take long, what are the key ingredients or elements that are part of this, this, these verses? And do you see any connection between those key elements of creation and peace or conflict? Now I have elements of shalom. Okay, shalom means peace, the Hebrew word for peace. So we'll talk a bit more about that. Okay, next five from Jing. One, two, three. Did someone just leave? Ah, uh, yeah. To Jita, you will take Proverbs 3 from 13 and then to 17 to 20. Okay, same question. What are the key ingredients or how do did the, did these verses relate to creation? And then the last group over here from Helen on around to Bong. John 1, 1 to 5, okay? So just go ahead, gather around in a small group, read through the verses together. I hope you have a Bible or online access somehow um, and answer this question.